This has sometimes been called the tragedy of winter quarters, but there was no tragedy here, for tragedy spells defeat and disaster. This was the victory of winter quarters, for here was faith and hope and charity raised to their loftiest pinnacle, which greed and selfishness were brought low. President Heber J. Grant. The pioneers built a temple in Avu and spent every minute they could building it. They loved it and were sad to have to leave it, but they knew to follow God's will and to avoid persecution they would have to. Sarah P. Rich, a pioneer who lived in Nauvoo, said, But many were the blessings we had received in the house of the Lord, which caused joy and comfort in the midst of all our sorrows, and enabled us to have faith in God, knowing that He would guide us and sustain us in the unknown journey that it would lay before us. If it had not been for the faith and the knowledge that was bestowed upon us in that temple by the influence and help of the Spirit of the Lord, our journey would have been like taking one leap in the dark. The things pictured here are some of the things that were suggested to take on the list with the pioneers to put on their handcarts and wagons. Elder Holland said, If we can keep in our families the things that are most important, maybe a lot of other things start to take care of themselves. Maybe a lot of other less needed things sort of fall out of the wagon. In 1 Nephi 3, 7 it says, And it came to pass that I, Nephi, said unto my father, I will go and do the things which the Lord hath commanded. For I know that the Lord giveth no commandments unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them, that they may accomplish the thing which he commanded them. These faithful pioneers knew that they needed to cross the Mississippi River. As they woke up that morning, it was frozen. They had no idea how they were going to cross. But they knew that because they were keeping the commandments, that God would provide a way. As they prayed, and as they woke up the next morning, the river was frozen. And they knew that it was because they were striving each and every day to keep their covenant and to keep the commandments, and they knew that God would bless them because of it. Brigham Young wanted to be on the west side of the Missouri River before spring hit, so they could be prepared to leave and not have to walk across the Missouri like they'd had to walk across the frozen Mississippi. So he petitioned the government for help, and the way that the government came up with was they called for 500 men to fight in the Mexican-American War. They called themselves the Mormon Battalion, the men marched from Council Bluffs, Iowa, all the way to San Diego, California, which is still the longest march in infantry history. The men were hesitant to go, but they trusted in the prophet of God and knew that if they followed him, that they would be blessed and that their Father in Heaven would be proud of them. This right here is a model of what winter quarters look like. The pioneers settled right alongside the Missouri River. If you look really closely, you can see that there are rectangles. Each one of those rectangles represented wards, and that is how they split everything up. And it was in winter quarters that wards were first established, and 22 bishops were made here in winter quarters. Winter quarters was definitely a place where these pioneers had to work together to help each other. In April 1997, President Hinckley dedicated the Mormon Trail Center at Historic Winter Quarters as a memorial building of all those pioneers who died at winter quarters and who sacrificed in order to follow the Lord and to follow the prophet. The statue that stands outside the Mormon Trail Center is representative of a young pioneer family who would have stayed here at winter quarters, trekked from Nauvoo and continued on to the Salt Lake Valley. For a long period of time, the Mormon Pioneer Cemetery was the only thing that was here to represent the pioneer sacrifice that they made. The Mormon Pioneer Cemetery people were buried here from 1847 to 1849, so over a two-year period of time. There are 360 pioneers buried here, half of them being children. This beautiful temple stands right by the cemetery. To me, this shows the sacrifice that these pioneers were willing to make that they knew that even if it caused death, that it would be okay because of the covenants that they had made in the cemetery. These pioneers were willing to give anything they had to the Lord. The only headstone remaining in winter quarters was that of Amy Quarter, who was buried just behind the statue in the cemetery with her two baby boys. Amy was pregnant when she left Nauvoo, and she said it was a really difficult pregnancy. She wasn't sure why, but she'd been pregnant several other times before. On December 11th, she discovered the cause of her special discomfort when two little darling baby boys were born, twins which she named Joseph and Benjamin. 
They quietly left her loving arms and this earth the next day, December 12th. Amy wrote in her journal, If I cannot make it to the land of Zion, I am confident that the Lord will answer this prayer of my heart, that my children will remain righteous, and that through them will come generations of righteousness. This statue right here, we like to refer to this man as Stillman Pond. Stillman Pond started the journey with nine children and his wife. At the end of the journey, he was by himself, that he literally lost everything that he loved. If you notice, wrapped around him is a cloak, which represents faith. And there on the back of the cloak is a branch, which represents the adversary. As we keep our cloak on, as we strive to always have faith, that is what protects us from the adversary. Stillman Pond continued pressing forward. No matter the trial that he was given, he had the faith that he knew that Heavenly Father would provide a way. This cabin is a replica of the ones that existed in winter quarters as the pioneers lived there. There are between 500 to 700 log cabins in the whole town of winter quarters. Each of them, this size, could have fit about 12 to 14 people, usually having two families in each. There was a man named Francis Webster who came from England. He was very wealthy and easily could have come by one of these covered wagons but instead he paid for nine other families to come by handcart. Him and his family came in the Martin Handcart Company. Francis Webster and his family arrived safely in Salt Lake. Years later, as they were sitting in a Sunday school class, people were criticizing them for leaving so late in the season. Francis Webster's reply was, I ask you to stop this criticism. You are discussing a matter you know nothing about. Cold historic facts mean nothing here for they give no proper interpretations of the questions involved. Mistake to send the handcart company out so late in the season, yes. But I was in that company, and so was my wife. We suffered beyond anything you can imagine, and many died of exposure and starvation. But did you ever hear a survivor of that company utter a word of criticism? Every one of us came through with the absolute knowledge that God lived, for we became acquainted with him in our extremities. I have pulled my handcart when I was so weak and weary from illness and lack of food that I could hardly put one foot ahead of the other. I have looked ahead and seen a patch of sand or a hill slope, and I have said, I can only go that far, and there I must give up, for I cannot pull the load through it. I have gone to that sand, and when I reached it, the cart began pushing me. I have looked back many times to see who was pushing my cart, but my eyes saw no one. I knew then that the angels of God were there. After all that they went through, the pioneers finally made it to the Salt Lake Valley, and over the course of the next 40 years, spent their time once again building the house of the Lord. They knew that that was what the prophet, that their father in heaven, that their savior wanted them to do. The pioneers endured many things, and they knew that as they did that, they built their faith, and they became closer to their savior, Jesus Christ.
I said we have to go